So I thought I'd save a few notes on this Raymarine Element 7 inch uh, fish finder. Uh, this is actually a relatively inexpensive fish finder. The, about the only thing that you give up is the touch screen. And uh, I upgraded from about a 10 year old HDS5. And um, you know, I gotta say that for my money, this is a way better fish finder. Um, I know it's not fair to compare, you know, devices that are 10 years apart in terms of age, but the one thing that I really notice about the Raymarine is um, it doesn't give you indications that something's there when it isn't. So this is uh, water that's got, you know, really nothing in it. Um, you're not getting false uh, positives for fish, or you're not getting arches because they're seaweed or this kind of thing. I'm not what I would call a professional uh, guy. I only spend maybe, if I'm lucky, a couple hundred hours a year uh, on the water. So if you're looking for a fish finder that is relatively straightforward and easy to use, I think this is a decent one. So from the standpoint of navigating through, uh, one of the things that is nice is uh, there's a chart and a dashboard. And uh, this is uh, pretty decent. I mean, if I turn on the engine here, um, the Yamaha basically connects directly into it. Uh, you, I've got various things displayed on here, uh, alternator voltage, uh, all sorts of temperatures and pressures, oil pressure, uh, coolant temperature, fuel flow, which is really, really nice because you can figure out whether you have your tilt or trim and engine RPM at the best uh, combination for what the sort of speed you're getting um, and that just works so uh, if you um, have I think it's a 2007 or better Yamaha you buy a cable and you buy the NEMA or NMEA backbone uh, and for about a hundred bucks you get that functionality and uh, there's nothing special you just hook it right into the fish finder and it just seems to work so, um, you know, other engines might have something a little bit more complicated, I don't know. Um, so, this is the standard chart. Um, if you want full screen, obviously you can go and you can select full, tr full screen chart. And uh, I'm, where I'm today is uh, on Lesser Slave Lake in Alberta. Uh, things are pretty flat here. Um, but I find that the menus are pretty straightforward, like zooming in. Zooming out, pretty straightforward. Um, if you're looking for the fish finder functionality only, this is where things get kind of cool, is they've got down vision, side vision. Uh, this is just strictly down vision. But if uh, I go into just side vision as an example, um, not like I said, not much to see here. Um, you can mark waypoints. Waypoints are very easy and intuitive. So when you have a fish on, you just push the little orange button up there and it uh, saves it for you. If you want, uh, let's go with Real Vision 3D. This I haven't even tried yet, so let's, let's just see if we can do this. So this is this funky new three-dimensional thing where it sort of keeps track of what went on behind the boat. And um, so here's the thing about fish finders. When I was doing some comparisons, I probably spent what was way too much time comparing the different types of fish finders, uh, Raymarine, Lawrence, uh, Garmin. I had no loyalty to any of the companies because Lawrence had sold me a couple of fish finders and although they were pretty good at keeping up with the firmware updates and stuff like that, I never really sort of felt that I was becoming better at fishing as a result of having one of their devices in the boat and that's just, you know, probably a combination of my lack of willingness to play with it versus just use it. And um, also I think a lot of it has to do with the type of fishing you do. So. If you're the type of guy that's doing mostly shallower lakes, freshwater lakes, stuff like this, maybe Lawrence is pretty good, but we do a bit of everything. So we've got some lakes that are, 
you know, 50, 100 feet deep, and we've got other lakes that we go to that are 300, 400 feet deep. And maybe my impression will change after we get out on some of those. But, um, you know, this, this fish finder just seems to work. And that, that's something that I can't say enough um, in terms of how it, um, you know, works. And it gives you this three-dimensional thing if you want it, if you want to have uh, side vision or just regular down vision uh, or sonar. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Oh, it's telling me that my second battery, so that's another thing that's kind of cool, is uh, the second battery is hooked into the system. So when my trolling motor has pulled too much juice out, it'll bitch about that. And uh, so this is traditional sonar. This is what all of our, you know, Lawrence guys that are using it. Uh, down vision is more the one that I use. And uh, this I find to be, you know, just, just a good basic sonar. And uh, what else can I show you? So the combination of the three different sonar types, the um, engine diagnostics or the engine information, and the charting, which is included, and you can get one of these for you know under a thousand bucks, including the the good transducer, which um, I don't think you can touch it with with any other manufacturer. And uh, the only thing that you're giving up, and you should be aware of this, is the networking. So. If you want to hook another Raymarine device in it, you have to be very, very careful if you start adding more than one fish finder into your boat. If, however, all you're looking for is your engine diagnostics and anything to do with NMEA networking, then it fully supports it. And uh, it will also even do um, basic networking of uh, things like GPS and even steer an autopilot, which is really quite trick if you have a hydraulic system in or whatever in a boat so uh, a pretty cool little package if you're okay not giving away uh, or not going with the networking aspects or uh, the more sophisticated networking but i think for the money uh, this would definitely be my choice again so hope that helps talk to you soon